What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you a review of the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro in this Italian camo colorway. These released this past April 13th, which for those who don't know is the anniversary of Kobe Bryant's last game in the NBA. So these drop alongside a Kobe 8 and a Kobe 4, all three representing a piece in time in Kobe Bryant's life. So the Kobe Pro Tro 4 Philly, that of course is where Kobe was born, as well as where he attended high school. And then the Kobe 8 Venice Beach, that of course represents Los Angeles, where he spent his NBA career. And then this one, the Kobe 6 Italian Camo, this represents his childhood and youth, where he was raised in Italy. So these drop for a price of 190 US dollars or 245 here in Canada. The official colorway for this shoe is black, crimson, bog green, and khaki. And this is a re-release of an original colorway of the Nike Kobe 6, which first dropped back in 2011. And just like any Kobe Pro Tro release, these were extremely hard to get. It's incredibly frustrating that Nike continues to limit the stock, but it is what it is. So basically you had to get really lucky to get these for retail or have some sort of backdoor or plug. Otherwise, you're poning up resale prices to get a pair of these. So diving into the details of this shoe, the upper of the shoe is covered in this very fine mesh, but just like any other Kobe 6, we have these TPU translucent nubs, which mimic the look of scales. And all throughout this mesh, we have this camo print. Overlaid on the sides of the shoe on both sides, we have a crimson colored swoosh, and we have these circular eyelets which hold the laces in place that are reinforced, giving it added durability. Covering the back of the shoe, we have what feels like a synthetic leather overlay in black, and we have a large TPU heel cup with Kobe Bryant's signature in crimson, and this helps to give you additional structure and support for the back end of the shoe, while not weighing the shoe down too much. For the laces, these only come with one lace option, and they're a flat style black colored lace. Underneath this, the tongue is covered in a black colored mesh, but we have this honeycomb shaped foam underneath, which gives you additional cushioning and acts as a barrier so that the laces don't cause too much discomfort or pressure against your foot. And then on the very top of the tongue, we have this stretchy black colored neoprene, and then glued on the top, we have this crimson colored Kobe Bryant logo. The back of the tongue is covered in a crimson colored nylon, and then the interior of the back of the shoe, this is covered in a black colored nylon, which feels silky smooth to the touch. And then as far as the insoles go, just like any other Kobe 6, we have this foam insole which feels extremely stiff out of the box, it almost resembles styrofoam, but this is meant to mold and shape to your foot the more you wear them and break them in. So the upper of these Kobe 6 Pro Shows, it sits atop this full length Cushlon foam midsole, which is different from the OGs which utilize Phylon. So the midsole is painted in black, and underneath the forefoot but not visible to the eye, we have this large zoom turbo unit, which is a substantially larger zoom unit compared to the OGs. However, the originals did have a zoom unit underneath the heel, but for some reason for these Pro Shows, Nike decided to do away with the zoom unit, so all you have on the heel is just Cushlon. And then turning the shoe over to the bottom. So the outsole here is constructed out of two tones of rubber. The forefoot is done in more of a greenish or olive green tone. And then the heel is this tan color. We have this very unique traction pattern, kind of resembles snakeskin. And on the heel, we have this crimson colored Kobe logo. And underneath the outsole, sandwiched between the midsole, we have a carbon fiber shank plate, which is there to help with torsional rigidity, midfoot support, and to help prevent your foot from twisting when walking or running. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about how these fit, so the Kobe 6 definitely is a snug fitting shoe. Keep in mind, I'm wearing these strictly for casual use. I'm not playing ball in these, unfortunately. And for me, I prefer to go up half a size. So my foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I got these in a size 10 and a half, and they still fit me pretty snug, but comfortably snug. So I feel like if you have a narrow foot, you could go true to size in these, but for a regular size foot or wide footers, especially if you're wearing these casually, go up that half size, your toes will thank you. Moving on to the comfort, so again, keep in mind I'm wearing these strictly for casual use, so my opinion on the comfort is coming specifically from that lens. So the comfort of the shoe straight out of the box, it's not the best, but understand that this is a shoe that really needs to be broken in, and it's meant to be worn on the basketball court. So because of that, not only does that styrofoam-like insole need to be broken in, but the zoom unit underneath the forefoot as well, straight out of the box, you really can't feel it. But for some of my other Kobe 6s that I've had the chance already to wear them more, you begin to feel more of that bounciness and the responsiveness the more you wear them. 
but the heel of the shoe feels pretty plush. This is a thick chunk of Kushlon, so this right away you can feel that compression. But generally speaking, this is just a shoe that you really need to wear, break them in, and they do feel more comfortable over time. Finally, in terms of the quality and craftsmanship, so first off, the material quality was nothing special. This is meant to be a performance basketball shoe, so all the materials are catered for that purpose. You're not going to have genuine leathers or suede on this shoe, which is perfectly fine. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, for the most part, it was pretty well put together. There were some very minor issues with glue stains around the midsole, but other than that, I thought this pair was very well put together. The paint job was good, the panels were consistent, no loose threads or anything like that. So safe to say I was very happy with how these turned out once I got these in person. So with all that out of the way now let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up for you and I'll show you guys how these look. If Nike's purpose was to bring back an original colorway of the Kobe 6, even though there were so many options for them to pursue, I thought they did a great choice bringing this pair back. This is such a contrast compared to the Grinch or the Reverse Grinch. It's a much more muted, darker toned colorway, and obviously because of the camo print, it's a lot more hidden in plain sight compared to those two, which are obviously extremely bold and in your face. But this is a pair I think would look really good in maybe the fall and the winter season. It's not really a shoe that I can see myself wearing in the summer, but it's still a pair that I'm really happy to add to my collection. This one of the three was my favorite. I actually prefer these ones over the Kobe 4 Phillies and the Kobe 8 Venice Beach. And I know that might be blasphemous given how popular the Venice Beach 8s are, but I just think I like the Kobe 6 as a silhouette better than the Kobe 8s. So let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about this Italian camo Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro. For anyone watching, were you lucky enough to grab these for retail? Did you strike out and pay resale for these? And of the three pairs that released on April 13th, what was your favorite of the pack? As usual though, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on x at sean.go spelt out, and visit my website as well at seango.ca. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review. I know it's a super long overdue and delayed review, but appreciate your continued love and support. And I'll catch all of you in my next review.